Hello, and welcome to the first episode of LGBTQIA+, Heroes, Icons, Legends, and Events. This series of programs will cover a wide variety of topics, events, and people, such as Freddie Mercury, Laverne Cox, RuPaul, Stonewall, and Marsha P. Johnson. Today's topic is Sally Ride. Here are some interesting facts you may not know about Sally Ride. Sally Kristen Ride was born in 1951 in Los Angeles, California, and she grew up in Encino. She was the oldest of two children born to Dale and Joyce Ride. Her younger sister was named Karen, but Sally couldn't pronounce that, so she called her Bear. Sally's father, Dale, was a political science professor at Santa Monica College, and her mother, Joyce, was a volunteer counselor who worked at women's correctional facilities. Joyce worked with Friends Outside, an organization that helped women inmates stay in touch with their families. Joyce visited many different prisons in Southern California. She did not work for one. Neither of Sally's parents had backgrounds in science, but they encouraged her interest. Sally was a good athlete and enjoyed sports her whole life. She got a tennis scholarship to attend Westlake School for Girls in Los Angeles. At a summer tennis camp, she met Billie Jean King, who urged her to become a professional tennis player. Sally decided to ignore that advice and continue her science studies. Sally's mother famously said that Sally didn't like that she couldn't make the tennis ball go exactly where she wanted it to. Sally attended Stanford University and earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in English and a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics in 1973. Sally stayed on at Stanford and earned a Master's degree in Physics in 1975, followed by a Doctorate degree in Physics in 1978. Sally considered herself a physicist and not an astrophysicist. She thought she would become a university professor because she loved teaching, doing physics research, and university life. But one day in 1977, Sally was eating breakfast in the cafeteria and she saw an article in the student newspaper. NASA was recruiting astronauts and for the first time, women could apply. Sally decided in that moment that she wanted to apply. She was one of the more than 8,000 men and women who applied and she was also one of six women of the 35 people chosen by NASA to train to become astronauts. Sally began astronaut training in 1978. She learned how to fly NASA's T-38 jets. She trained in parachute jumping and water survival, and she helped design and test the 50-foot robot arm. And she was selected to be capsule communicator, or CAPCOM, for the second and third flights of the space shuttle. That is the only person who talks to the astronauts in space from mission control at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Sally enjoyed the other astronauts, but she especially liked Steve Hawley. Sally and Steve got married in 1982. Also in 1982, Sally was selected for the crew of the seventh space shuttle flight. That meant Sally was chosen to become the first American woman to fly in space. Before her historic space flight, Sally was asked some silly questions by reporters, such as, do you cry when you're under pressure? She replied, why doesn't anyone ask Rick that question? Are you going to wear a bra in space? And she replied, there is no sag in zero G. At that time, it was a shock for some people to think of a woman as an astronaut. Sally ended the press conference by saying, it's time we realized that women can do anything they want to. At age 32, Sally went on her first space flight as a mission specialist on the seventh shuttle mission aboard the space shuttle Challenger. The mission took off on June 18, 1983. They circled the Earth for six days, making 96 orbits and covering 2.5 million miles. The shuttle returned on June 24. Sally Ride was the first American woman in space and the youngest American ever to travel to space. She logged 343 hours in space travel overall. She was also the first woman to operate the shuttle's robotic arm as part of the team's mission to launch communication satellites. Sally was assigned to travel to space on a third NASA space shuttle mission, but that mission was called off when the Challenger space shuttle exploded in January 1986, killing the entire crew on board, including Krista McAuliffe, 
a teacher from New Hampshire. Sally served on the Disaster Investigation Board set up in response to the tragedy. She also participated on the Investigation Board for the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster in 2003. Sally retired from NASA in 1987. That same year, Sally and Steve divorced but remained good friends. Sally became a physics professor at the University of California, San Diego. She also served as president of Space.com from 1999 until 2000. In 2001, Sally and her childhood friend, Tam O'Shaughnessy, started Sally Ride Science, a science education company dedicated to educating and encouraging girls and boys to become science literate and to consider science careers. Two of the many programs provided by Sally Ride Science were the Moon Cam and the Earth Cam. Both educational outreach programs aimed at educating students. The moon cam experiment allowed students to take photos of the moon's surface, and the earth cam let students take photos of Earth from the International Space Station. Sally started it in 1995, and it's still going strong, run by the group that owns Space Camp in Alabama. Between 1986 and 2004, Sally co-wrote eight science books for young people, including to Space and Back, The Third Planet, Exploring Our Solar System, Mission Planet Earth, and Mission Save the Planet. Sally was inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame in 2003. She was recognized for her numerous contributions to space aeronautics and her passion for space science. Sally Ride died on July 23, 2012, after battling pancreatic cancer for 17 months. She was 61 years old. She was buried next to her father in Santa Monica, California. Many of Sally's colleagues were surprised to learn after her death that she and Tam had a romantic relationship and that they were a couple for 27 years. Sally's close friends and family knew about their relationship. A spot on the moon where NASA intentionally crashed two mapping probes called Ebb and Flow was named after Sally. The U.S. Navy named an academic research ship after Sally. President Barack Obama posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom to Sally Ride in November 2013. The Medal of Freedom is the highest honor that can be awarded to a civilian. Her partner, Tam O'Shaughnessy, accepted the award for Sally. President Obama said, as the first American woman in space, Sally didn't just break the stratospheric glass ceiling, she blasted through it. And when she came back to Earth, she devoted her life to helping girls excel in fields like math, science, and engineering. Young girls need to see role models, she said. You can't be what you can't see. Today, our daughters can set their sights a little bit higher because Sally Ride showed them the way. In 2018, the U.S. Postal Service introduced a stamp with Sally's image as she appeared when she made her first space flight. Behind her is a space shuttle headed for space. To learn more about Sally Ride, please visit our website and click on Gale Resources, Biography and Context. Photo credits came from nasa.gov and pixabay.com. Also, Photo credits are courtesy of Dr. Tam O'Shaughnessy. She is a science educator, founder of Sally Ride Science, an author, and we thank her for her support in the creation of this program. <laughs>